All right, today we're going to jump into, of course, Cardano and ETH have been battling out for quite some time. Let's kind of take a look at where the chessboard lies up. And uh, my name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Let's get into today's topic, and that is the, the London hard fork has really kind of caused a little bit of a stir in the ETH community. Of course, it has also caused ETH, or at least the uh, idea of changing where ETH's trajectory is going. The hard fork is definitely doing the job in terms of, I think, moving the ball down the road. And the point of the whole hard fork aspect is that Ethereum has to reduce fees. We've got to be able to get to that exchange. Obviously, this is the next step in the EIP protocols to move toward ETH 2.0, which eventually will go to a proof of stake setup, as you guys know. So um, the, the question is, because ETH and Cardano have somewhat been locked at the hip, because Cardano is, in many cases, the you know kind of the, the fork off of ETH, when you look at where Charles Hoskinson, the founder of Cardano, and, and um, where they are wanting to go, the real question is, with ETH's big news, how does this apply to Cardano? What happens if you're a Cardano holder? Are you going to be uh, in a position of uh, acquisition? Or is there a potential that's going on right here? I want to jump to a couple of stories. The first one here is Cardano's new lethal weapon. This was just here also this week. Again, I think um, a scenario where Cardano is doing some press and Charles is probably trying to get as much out there as he can. Uh, Kick.io, uh, basically to, to basically the, the program of Kick.io was the, the design was to further strengthen the ecosystem of DeFi and complement the gap not covered by the current DeFi leader, Ethereum. Uh, the fundraising platform, which is what Kick.io is, is going to be built on the Cardano uh, network and undergoing development for its launch in the very near future, there are some cool things. Uh, the main reason behind Ethereum's domination in the space obviously has been due to the convenience provided to users, but the big issue has been the cost, and that's been the pushback, I think, from uh, both the Cardano users and also even to a certain extent a lot of Ethereum uh, investors. However, the research analysts, despite getting launched in a few uh, years after Ethereum, Cardano ha has managed to basically attract a whole base of users, and we'll get into some of the growth of where Cardano has gone. But at the moment, Ethereum users have been disappointed, again, by the high fees. And this goes, again, back to the point of where they're trying to move off of proof of work and into proof of stake. The hard fork, though, does appear that it has uh, essentially kind of come to a position that has enabled it to kind of do something that a lot of the Ethereum investors, including myself, have been looking for, and that is just getting movement going and getting some productivity in the project at the next level. Here's another one right here is basically uh, what Cardano's uh, founded by Charles Hoskinson. He's basically saying, hey, listen, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna employ an evidence-based consensus algorithm, which is the Ouroboros. Uh, this is Cardano. It's all set to mark up a spot in the crypto space with its own proof of stake. So they're already at the space where eventually Ethereum wants to go. So Cardano does have some ability to move there. The issue is some of the challenges that they're currently facing in the protocol itself, which gets into the whole issue around uh, Alonzo. And we'll talk about Alonzo here in a, spec in a second, but I just want to kind of jump to what and how um, Charles basically responded to some of the pushback that's going on online right now. So Cardano expected to blast off with the launch of smart contracts. This is the Alonzo hard fork that I'm talking about. In a recent live stream, basically, Charles said, hey, <laughs> he didn't understand why there's so much pushback of what the situation is. And I think a lot of people have kind of put themselves in a, in a situation where they have kind of said, hey, listen, we, we're not seeing any progress here. We're starting to doubt Charles and, and what Cardano is really trying to do. Maybe this is going to be one of those things that just takes too long. E2.0 is still several months out, if not maybe end of year. And, but the, the advantage is, is that with the hard fork in place, it does start to change things up a little bit in terms, at least the fees. So, and also the mining, because of course I know the, don't get me going on the, on the miners scenario with ETH, because that does affect the miners profitability when, uh, with the London hard fork being in place. But jumping back to this, this was, uh, the altcoins price and facing some resistance, uh, from risking skeptic, uh, basically rising skepticism around the smart contract launch, basically saying, hey, we don't know if this is going to happen. 
Uh, this, it was basically surrounding smart contracts launch on Cardano increasing the odds. Here's the odds. There's some odd makers on this now that are 59 to 41 against, according to the most recent market position, that the prediction, and this was on Polymarket, that, you know, Charles is going to get this done. So that is a problem that people are in the situation right now where they're doubting Cardano's um, capability. And as you guys know, the real movement around any of these assets, digital assets, is based on the whole network effect. It works in Bitcoin, Ethereum, it doesn't matter. Digital assets have very little fundamentals that are related to profitability and things like that. Now, there are a lot of things that, that kind of grow with it in terms of users and projects and partnerships and things like that. But the core fundamental is, or fundamentals on this have no real relationship to the price. And that is really what kind of uh, puts these things on that whole network effect track and how you have to track it in that way. So basically, Charles uh, basically said, stated in a live stream that he awaited the alarms of far, a hard, hard fork combinator event would be announced in mid-August. And that's kind of when he's been promising it. And it, they are set to take on the smart contracts after the live uh, hard fork event. So uh, what he's saying now, August or September, which is the first time I've heard September and I just want to kind of jump to the tweet here from Charles, just to give you an idea of the push, the idea of the pushback that's on here. We'll just jump in here. Basically, Charles is saying, hey, he can't believe of all the skepticism and why people are pushing back so much on this. And basically, he's saying, listen, you promised all this for 2020 uh, and thousands of dApps by this year. It's fair criticism if you ask that particular user right there, which is River Moon 21. So I think the point is, is that people are a little bit skeptical on the over the top and to the moon approach that Cardano has had on getting a lot of these projects in place. Now, with that being the case, there are some other things that are happening uh, with Cardano. And I wanna kind of jump to those. Ahead of the hard fork, investors are curious whether the smart contract functionality will arrive on the main net and uh, the price rally, which is like three bucks, becomes more likely if they launch. So this is back to the point of people saying, okay, if they get this off, if they get it done, we're gonna get to three bucks, which I think there are some potentials here of maybe going even higher with Cardano. Uh, it, again, it goes back to the progress that Cardano needs to make. So that's the biggest issue I think right there. Now you, you see companies like Celsius who now are kind of throwing a lifeline over, I shouldn't say lifeline, but they're definitely sh throwing over some support. This was also just this week uh, where Celsius came in and said, listen, we're gonna go ahead and start paying some interest over here on Cardano. And that was a big move. Now you're gonna get 4% if you are putting uh, your Cardano over on Celsius. So that's a big uh, advantage for Car Cardano. Uh, this is kind of interesting because the Cardano network is growing in anticipation of the major upgrade. Um, and then as reported back in May, they surpassed the 1 million wallet mark after adding, adding nearly 7,000 wallets per day. And then if you look at the data pool that shows 71.8% of Cardano's total supply is equivalent to 31 billion, it's currently being staked. That's 725,000 addresses that are out there on Cardano right now. So, uh, and that's like 2,700 pools that are active here. So lots of movement, I think here also, Charles recently confirmed that the hard fork uh, smart contracts will be available on the cryptocurrency network and added uh, that with time on the infrastructure that Cardano will only get better. So he is still all in on the fact that Cardano is going to make this happen. Down here in the green, just some decentralized platforms are, uh, platforms are already preparing to go live on the Cardano network. So that tells me that they may know something from the developer layer that this is going to happen and be in place. So that is all positive news for Cardano. So the scenario is with the London hard fork in place now, active today as we film this, what is the effect on Cardano? And what has been the effect on this lead up? Because remember, we're talking about the network effect and how this might affect uh, Cardano's price position and also Cardano's play toward any kind of improvement during this bull run, which I still believe we are in the middle of right now. We've got action on Ethereum in a big way. And then of course, uh, Bitcoin has had some tremendous action. 
and also a little bit of correction, but I think this is, this, these are all natural moves that we'll continue to see. Let's jump over to trading view real quick. And I also want to uh, jump on, um, you know, just the sentiment over on trade the chain as well in a second and do si kind of some cross comparison here with this. But you can kind of see, we did this chart uh, this week uh, to kind of take a look at where uh, Ethereum would essentially hold out. ETH was holding at a sentiment. This was back here in this period of time frame, which was July 7th, all the way down here to its bottom on July 20th before the action really started. Is sentiment on ETH was holding at 59.64, amplification 60.22. Again, very strong numbers for this period of time. And it also really kind of indicated and gave us a forward looking indicator of where ETH was going. And that is the top line that we're tracking. That orange line that you see here is Cardano. This is a growth percentage uh, chart. Um, and I'll jump off this here in a second, but you can kind of see the zone here for amplification was pretty well accurate with exception of that spot right there where we had a little bit of outage and we had a little bit of outage down here in this area. So the good thing is, is and also right there, um, but the good thing is, is our zone is really holding pretty accurate here on where ETH is today. And I think that's the cool thing. Cardano, though, has had quite a bit lower sent sentiment and amplification, which is really interesting right here. You can kind of see it splitting away in uh, position in comparison with ETH just in, in terms of growth uh, versus if you look at it on a much you know, larger scale, Cardano has been somewhat tracking. This is right around where we're talking about, because right here is where hard fork basically occurs, right in here. And this is where I think we start to see the separation of ETH and Cardano. Cardano, I think, is in a position right now, as you'll kind of see here in the amplification, it is flatlining uh, a little bit. So what does this mean in the short term? In the short term, the likelihood is that Cardano's probably going to go sideways until they can get in a position where Charles and the team has got confidence back in the community that the Alonzo hard fork is going to happen and that it's going to happen on time. So that's a, a big one. Here's the serious issue. If they miss the hard fork date in August, uh, and here's the thing, you've got August and September playing into this. If they miss this hard fork this month and maybe into early September, Cardano has an issue, and they're going to have an issue in a time which is going to be very critical, both good and bad. If they hit it, they're going to time this bull run perfectly, and we're going to see an explosion in Cardano. And if they miss it, that will be a problem because the rest of the market will be looking at most likely some pretty significant growth. Cardano could be flatlining in a period of time in which many investors are going into the market and Cardano may be in a, in a bit of a challenge here. So they've kind of had to put a stake in the ground and say, this is where it's gonna happen, and we think this is where we're going to be. And if they do come through with it, Charles is gonna come out the hero, and of course Cardano is going to fly. And I think that's what we'll be looking for, is Cardano somewhere, you know, some people are saying the $3 uh, price point, I still am very strong in the five to $10 price point by year end, providing that Alonzo doesn't slow them down. If Alonzo does slow them down, then Cardano is definitely in a different framework. I do not think it's a bad project. This is just a, a matter of timing, and timing is going to be everything with this. When you look at Ethereum, as we've had, and make sure and check out our Ethereum video we just did on the hard fork, and why we think Ethereum has some potential to really break out and make a run, maybe into the 20K range. That's a big one. There's a lot of uh, experts and industry pundits who have kind of looked at that as being a potential for where Ethereum is going. Now, can Ethereum and Cardano coexist? Sure they can. Ethereum is, is barreling down the track though with some big movement with the London hard fork and moving toward an ETH 2.0. Their big critical point of time will be towards the end of the year. If Ethereum doesn't hit their uh, ETH 2.0 transition, that's another problem. And could Cardano pick up the pieces and really move? So you can kind of see this is a very competitive scape, landscape of where uh, investors are watching things very closely, but new people coming into the space are maybe learning this for the first time of what has been happening. Remember, Cardano 
the founder, Charles Hoskinson, split off from Ethereum because of the principles of where Ethereum was on proof of stake. And of course, now we're seeing Ethereum move in that direction. So lots happening out there in the space right now. Good news is if you are looking at all of this, it is how we put these deals together. It's called a market mover. We'll put together some, uh, you know, some news, some research, and then layer in some technical analysis to give you guys at least a direction on which way to go. It is not investment advice, of course. We want you guys to do as much of your own, you know, packages that you can, build your own ideas, but the hopefully this gets you going in the right direction. And I think right now, if I was looking at Cardano, this may be an actual opportunity to acquire. It has had some nice run. Don't get me wrong, Cardano is still flying and doing great. Is it is it performing like ETH? No, it's not. But it is performing, but it may be in a position where it either starts to get a little chop going in the market and you just have to watch watch for that. Maybe that's an opportunity though for you to ju uh, jump in and enter into Cardano if you're not in it already and look for the opportunity that's gonna happen if and when it does in August or early September with the hard fork. So. Anyway, if you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now, all these charts, they're available to you. You can listen or come over here to YouTube and take a look at them. Just search Paul Barron Network and you'll be able to jump in right into our videos. Make sure and like and subscribe on the channel. It's the number one way we get both feedback and also how you can help the channel to continue to do these kinds of deep dives for these kind of projects out there. If you want to reach out to me, just hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. I'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.